So my name is Andre Manolio and today I'm going to present a bit about the autonomous database and how this database fits in in typical architectures in OCI. So this presentation is going to cover two main aspects, the database, its features and OCI, or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and the Oracle Cloud, and how these two go together. Uh, we're going to start with a safe harbor statement, meaning that uh, most of the things over here are for information purposes only, and may not be part of any contract. First of all, this is who I am. Uh, I've been working with the Oracle database for almost 15 years now. I've been working for Oracle for uh, about seven or eight years. And this picture is when I was working in Oracle of about five years ago. Uh, this is me right now with my family. And if you ask me what I wanted to do in my free time, well, this picture over here should be uh, representative. Now, if you ask me popcorn or nachos, I would choose popcorn absolutely every time. I'm sorry for that. And in today's uh, agenda would be to tell you a little bit about autonomous database, an overview about it. I'm going to share with you three examples of architectures using autonomous data warehouse, three examples of architectures using autonomous transaction processing, some special architectures or examples on how to load data into autonomous database. And at the end, we would uh, have a bit of time for QLA. Now, to understand a bit uh, the concepts and why auto it is autonomous data warehouse and autonomous transaction processing, I would say let's go into the autonomous database overview. Now, autonomous database was created with the intent of revolutionizing the data management in the cloud. So the, the basic idea is having the cloud that brings elasticity, that brings availability, that brings access from everywhere, powerful access, and it makes it quite available for everybody, uh, not only experts, experts, but also uh, entry-level uh, specialists. For this, it was created the autonomous database and building and maintaining databases made it made easy for everybody. And how is this possible? What's behind it? Well, the purpose would be to have business agility, uh, have uh, benef be beneficial for the company that uses it, uh, have people using it not only uh, experts, core experts, deep down uh, high level experts, low level experts, but also high level. Uh, and also uh, graduates and newly interns creating, being able to create rapidly, create a database, rapidly start developing applications. And to do this, you would need to uh, have a database that withstands security, has uh, powerful security, has powerful agility, and also can be used for enterprise applications. And therefore we have the Oracle database typically on a very powerful infrastructure, which is the, in the Exadata, and all together inside the OCI, the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. All of it bringing it together to the autonomous database. Now, everything ha has its own factor, importance factor. Uh, Exadata is the hardware built specifically for the database. The Oracle database that has uh, more than 30 years of experience of development, feature development, automations, and so on, and take it fully automated and bring it onto the market. And also OCI, which with its powerful tools and scripts and machine learning algorithms to govern it all. So yes, uh, at this point, autonomous database, it is only part of the OCI in, uh, in Oracle Cloud. And speaking of machine learning over here, what does this machine learning do for, for the database? Well, machine learning is part of everything. So starting from hardware on detection and recovery of uh, failed disks or uh, sick servers and so on, 
going to the software side on hang management, anomaly detection, error identification, and so on. And also on workload optimizations. So we have uh, collecting real-time statistics, monitoring how the database is used, what's the frequent access methods, uh, building um, automatic indexes, and so on. So machine learning is a core part of the autonomous database, and it is at the very level of it. Now, autonomous database new features, or the features that brings it to the table. Well, first of all, is the database lifecycle. It's very easy to create a database. It's very fast to create a new database. It's very uh, elastic, being able to, uh, to have auto-scaling and automate the, the number of uh, CPUs and, and the gigabytes of storage used uh, on, on the auto-scaling. And uh, cloning made very fast, preview mode uh, on the next versions of, of the database. Now this is this database is uh, built on top of the OCI and um, is is part of it, and therefore you have monitoring as OCI native monitoring, and also you have fast and quick access to OCI object storage. OCI object storage is one thing, and as you can see over here, you can access data also from a, a Microsoft Azure object store or from S3, Azure, S3, uh, Azure sorry, uh, AWS S3. Also uh, being intended uh, for development, for ease of use, you have SQL developer web uh, part of it, you have um, application express part of it, uh, by default, you can enable REST APIs uh, quite easily and support for text and XML. And obviously security being um, quite important over here, it has all the compliance certifications needed so, so far. Now, I'm going to present a couple of features which I think uh, they're quite relevant for, for this database. And one of them is um, auto-scaling. Basically, when scaling up for a database up until now, you used to look when it's the peak performance of the database and you take into account um, safety buffer and that's how much you give for the database. So for example, your, your database usually runs at two CPUs um, on the machine, but on, uh, um, on a peak uh, end of the month workload, it scales up to four or five. And usually take that into account, you leave a safety buffer and uh, provision a, a server with seven CPUs for this, uh, particular database. And this brings cost, high cost on, on compute and on, on everything. With autonomous database, you can provision your database and you can take into account the frequent load. So let's say you have the frequent load of um, two CPUs and the, on the occasional uh, end of the month workload, which goes up, you can use auto scale to scale up to three times the number of CPUs. So this means you can scale up to, to six CPUs uh, and the workload, uh, the auto scaling comes back to, to CPUs. <clears throat> Another um, important factor of the autonomous database is the use of use. And the fact that many of the typical activities are uh, handled in the background by uh, Oracle, by scripts, by machine learning algorithms, or by uh, tight schedules. So this over here is uh, a quite of a short list of activities that DBAs usually do on their database. And usually on, in the on-premise, the DBA is the master. He needs to do absolutely everything from installation to security to database migration, uh, performance tuning, patching, version upgrading, and, and so on. So the, the list is much, much longer. But for, for this example, we, we take this into consideration. And 
compared to it, we have database cloud service or Exadata cloud service, which is the database also in, in, in OCI, also in the Oracle cloud. But this gives um, the ability for the customer to have much more control. So on, on many parts, you would see the shared responsibility. This means that for uh, patching, for example, you have the patch available, you have the scripts to apply the patch, to verify it and apply it. So it would uh, run smoothly and continuously, but it's still the responsibility of the customer. When do, does he want to run the script? When does he want to run the patches? So find the maintenance window, make sure you, you, you're ready in that maintenance window, apply the patch, restart the database and so on. So this, this is, is a complete process that is decided and um, completely followed through by the customer. Now on the autonomous side, this is done in the background by Oracle. Obviously you have maintenance windows, uh, these are informed, well informed up, up front, you can see them. Uh, usually they're in, they're in weekends, so no working um, schedule. And in that maintenance window, you'd be notified if is any chance to have a database restart. Uh, of either a small millisecond uh, loss of service, you'd be notified. But usually it's not that because it has all the maximum availability architectures in, in the background. So it has the real, real application clusters, it has the container database, uh, it has the pluggable databases moving from one container to the other. So the, the, the patching is done completely safe uh, and outside the working hours. Version upgrading, it's uh, practically the same. Uh, you'd be notified when a new version of the database is launched. For example, uh, from 18C to 19C, all the customers with 18C were notified. They had a window of uh, three months or more to test their applications on the new version, clone the database, create, uh, upgrade, test it, see if it's fully aware. And frankly, it was the fastest upgrade I've seen in my life. It took uh, 17 minutes for a customer to upgrade from 18C to 19C in the autonomous world. And the 70 minutes it was because uh, we also had a chat uh, in that uh, meeting. Now, uh, also in, in the agenda, uh, I spoke about the two flavors of the autonomous database, autonomous data warehouse and autonomous transaction processing. They're pr practically the same Oracle database, but with different configurations uh, in the background. So for example, Autonomous Data Warehouse is configured specifically to deal with large volumes of data. So it has columnar format, it creates data summaries based on, on the Exadata cells and the Exadata features. Uh, it uh, has a larger PGA for uh, increasing the memory speed of joins and aggregations. And on the other side, you have Autonomous Transaction Processing, ATP, which is uh, the raw format uh, database. Uh, it relies on indexes in 19C. The slide you'd see, it's a bit old. Uh, in 19C, you have auton, uh, automatic index creation, which is a feature that uh, studies the, the accessing method of the, the data in, in the tables and creates indexes. Some of the indexes are hidden, some are of the indexes uh, you can see them. So this would improve the access uh, at the row level. Also you have uh, a larger uh, SGA with a buffer cache holding the last uh, results and, and so on. On both of them, statistics are updated in real time uh, and very powerful presenting the uh, optimizer with the latest statistics uh, all the time. Now, speaking about both of them, uh, on autonomous data warehouse, because it is a data warehouse, uh, the question is, does it you work with other uh, analytics tools? So yes, it works with many, a list of many analytics tools. Uh, here are just some examples of analytics software that can work with Autonomous Data Warehouse. On transaction processing, actually, um, 
It is very powerful to explain that it is integrated with Apex and with Apex you can create applications quite fast. Actually, both of them are integrated with Apex, but for a developer, for, for uh, the developing purposes, you have Apex and you can use it for uh, spreadsheet conf consolidation, for example. You can take the uh, built-in applications and explore with them or, or build new ones on top of them or complement existing enterprise applications. And how you can do that, it is one of the examples that I'm going to talk to you about later in this presentation. So this is the overview of the autonomous database. Uh, it is a short overview just to get you familiar with it and its capabilities. Now, let's see how it fits in. So I'm going to start with Autonomous Data Warehouse. And for this part, I'm going to start a bit with how I considered the OCI architectures in this presentation. So the terminology of OCI that we're going to use and um, the specifics of the OCI that we're going to use um, are these. OCI is uh, um, composed of many Oracle regions. A region, it is actually the geographical region. Uh, for example, Frankfurt, it is actually the geographical area around Frankfurt. And in that region, uh, you have one or three data centers. Uh, for Frankfurt, uh, uh, we have three data centers that we call them availability domains. So we have avail availability domain one, availability domain two, and availability, availability domain three. Now the, these are the, the physical parts of it. On top of that, inside, on top of the, the physical data centers, we have a, a very powerful network, a very fast network between them. Uh, and on top of that, we come with a, a virtualization layer. So we have, sorry, wrong click. We have a virtual cloud network that customers can create. And that virtual cloud network is at the region level. So it can be across availability domains. Inside that virtual cloud network, uh, every customer can create subnets. You can either have a subnet per availability domain, subnet ABC as an example over here, or you can have a cross region subnet. So this type of subnet is expanding across the, the availability domains. So uh, an instance over here can be in either data centers or availability domains. Very powerful when it comes to disaster recovery. To connect to instances, uh, sorry, every subnet has its own security list, which is like a, a firewall, a software firewall, and a routing table, which would guide the connection from where to where to, to go. So you're going to see these uh, in, in uh, all my subnet representations um, in, uh, in this presentation. To connect to this virtual cloud network or to any instance inside, a customer can use either VPN, other fast connect that uh, goes into a component called dynamic routing gateway or DRG that it is at the virtual cloud network level or internet access that would go through an internet gateway. So this is also uh, at the virtual cloud network level. And inside of it, you can have as many subnets uh, and inside you can have instances, uh, for example, uh, Excel data cloud service or compute instances or databases and so on. How do you, how can you um, put these instances together in a typical architecture? Now this would be the, the next topics. So we, for the um, autonomous data warehouse, I choose uh, typically three uh, scenarios. One of them consolidates spreadsheets, uh, data warehouse in an e-business suite integration example, but it can be any uh, enterprise application or integrated data lake example. And for the 40, first example, consolidate spreadsheets, I'm not 
thinking specifically of uh, a department who has three or four spreadsheets and, and can work with them. That the, the department can work with them quite easily. But when the number of spreadsheets is overwhelming, uh, 20, 30, and you want to build something on top of that, you want to build a, a visualization, you want to, to uh, see the trend over 30 Excel files. Now, this can be uh, worrying and this can be very, very difficult. And usually in, in a data warehouse environment, you have several steps. Uh, and I'm taking a, the consideration for all the steps in, in these architectures. So we're going to start with discovering, and these are uh, the data that comes from uh, departmental spreadsheets or, or Excel files in, uh, or CSV files, many CSV files. Uh, and you need to ingest them, first of all. After that, it comes of a transformation to, to put them all together. It comes of a, a curate to see which data is where and, and uh, have the best data possible. And then put an analytics on top of that and start making a uh, visualization and, and start interpreting, making interpretations on top of that, uh, that data. And after that, present it to data consumers to do a measurement and acting. How can I put this architecture in OCI? Well, it is like this. You have departmental spreadsheets. You have, uh, usually it's not nice, but usually I know every person in the department has its own spreadsheet. And for all of them to work together, it's, it's quite difficult. So why don't they put all their, their uh, spreadsheets in, in object storage, load them in autonomous database, and use Oracle Analytics Cloud to build visualization and they dig through that data. So at the end, user access is with Oracle Analytics Cloud. So th this is the first scenario. The second scenario is data warehouse in an e-business suite integration example. And we consider both of them, uh, let's say, uh, departmental spreadsheets and the business suite, and you want to build something together on top of them. Uh, and therefore, in the ingest part, you would need to use a, a batch processing or, or a processing um, software like uh, Oracle Data Integrator, and then put the data in autonomous data warehouse um, and analytics cloud. Maybe use data catalog to see which and where all the data is and have a uh, governance over the, over the data. Now to put, put this architecture in OCI, let's start with a typical uh, e-business suite or enterprise application uh, architecture in OCI. So we have the database in a, on OCI region in a typical VCN with, with a subnet. Well, this is, quite drawn to the simplest way because it can be quite complicated, but I wanted to keep it simple because you can have multiple subnets, you can have multiple applications, multiple databases and so on. Keep it simple. One database, one application that uh, connects to it, a web server if you want to, to have um, an, an Apache in front of it, uh, security list routing table obviously on top of everything and customer accessing it through an internet gateway. Now, on top of it, let's bring our first architecture with, consider, uh, with consolidating Excel sheets. And here it is. So also uh, the guys in the department put their Excels in, in object storage, which are loaded in an um, autonomous database and uh, drilled through analytics. So the user can access both of them. Now, how, how can we make a connection? Well, typically you can make a, either a connection at the application level, but we're going to focus of a connection at the database level. So we're going to connect these two and we're going to connect them using Oracle Data Integrator. Oracle Data Integrator is the ODI software, which uh, everybody knows, but it, it is in the cloud in the marketplace area. So basically this software comes pre-installed and configured in, in OCI and uh, everybody with, with ODI experience can use it, connect the EBS database to Autonomous, bring out the, the EBS modules that they need and, and start 
uh, doing the analytics on top of that. Also in, in OCI, uh, a new service was launched um, a couple of months ago that it is OCI native. This means that uh, it can span very easily uh, um, with high workloads. And that service is data integration service. OCI native um, with monitoring and OCI being part of it and can deal with, with large volumes of data. So we can use this one also. Uh, both architecture are, are uh, quite easy to use. Now, the next part would be integrated data lake example. Here we have many, many data sources, enterprise applications, devices, sensors, events. So uh, we're, we're going to talk about a huge number of technologies over here. Uh, not only data integrator, uh, streams, um, golden gate. And this figure, which looked rather simple in the beginning, this picture, now it starts to be quite complicated. And considering the same steps in just transform curate, let me take you through the OCI services that can do that. So again, we have the same data sources, but these data sources can bring their data to uh, object storage, to can be a source of data for uh, data integration uh, for Golden Gate, which is in the marketplace or for Oracle Streams Analytics. And Oracle Stream Analytics, you see that it spans across uh, all the, the uh, pillars over here because it can do plenty of them. It can uh, get the data, uh, use Golden Gate, use Kafka, get the data, process it, uh, put it in autonomous database or present it direct to the end user. So that's why it, it's quite a powerful set of products over here. So ingest data integration, Golden Gate, uh, streaming maybe transforming data flow, which is based on Spark, uh, Apache Spark, uh, streaming again to, to ingest and transform. Curate is the autonomous data warehouse that can hold the data. You can use data catalog, which is um, a native service that can uh, connect to various data sources and tell you where you have the best data for uh, for what you need. And on top of that, you can analyze and predict using Oracle Analytics Cloud, using data science, using machine learning and, and so on, and present it to the end user. So these are the three typical architectures in, uh, in autonomous data warehouse. So we talked about uh, spreadsheet consolidation. We talked about, we talked about integration with enterprise applications, and we also talked about the data lake. Now let's talk about autonomous transaction processing, which is the, the transaction processing database and see three typical examples. One of them would be the simple one, deploy an Apache Tomcat application on top of autonomous database. So basically you deploy the, a small application server like Apache Tomcat or WebLogic, your application, and you want to connect it with the database quite fast, quite easy on, on the autonomous database. And next we're going to uh, increase the complexity of this architecture and go and talk about uh, microservices and Kubernetes and talk about CI CD pipeline with, with that. But the, the smallest one, the simplest one would be uh, this one. So we have the, our region, we have our virtual cloud network, uh, we have with our security list routing table, we have our autonomous database. Uh, take a look at it is in a, in a private subnet. And you also, because you want to keep it secured, and we also have a public subnet with the Apache Tomcat. So basically a user can access through internet gateway, the Apache Tomcat, and that, that application is connected to the autonomous database. And quite simple. Now you want to bring high availability to the table. How can you do that in, in OCI? Well, like this, you can put a load balancer in a public subnet 
And uh, here I would do the addition and, and talk about uh, a regional and a public regional subnet, because being regional means that you'd have a primary and a standby load balancer available. So this would be connecting to a primary. And this load balancer would balance the load between two or more Apache Tomcats in public, but also in private. Keep in mind this time you can put your application in a private subnet, security even more, and leave only the load balancer in a public uh, uh, access. So in a private uh, part, you'd have Apache Tomcat, uh, one or two servers or many servers, and connected to an autonomous database. But an autonomous database, you want to make it with high availability and um, you can bring it using DataGuard. So you'd have DataGuard enabled for the autonomous database, which is possible now. And this architecture is quite simple and it is possible because autonomous uh, transaction processing uh, gained a couple of new features. And one of them is automatic data guard. In the interface, it's just a button that says enable data guard, and it creates a standby database in, in a different uh, uh, availability domain. And uh, it is up and running for, for you. Obviously, it is managed in the background by Oracle, so you can command the switch over and um, and to do the switch over uh, quite fast. It detects where, uh, whether something happens, it, it does the switch over automatically. Also another feature that is quite useful over here is refreshable clones. So basically if you want your database to be a clone of the primary to keep a clone, a read-only clone somewhere, you can do that. You'd have refreshable clone, you can refresh it from time to time and keep uh, the data updated. Also, the fact that you'd have a private subnet, you can put your database from a public subnet to a private subnet and vice versa. You can change that on, on the autonomous data warehouse. And obviously um, a very powerful feature is the fact that you can uh, enable REST data services and use your database uh, quite a powerful uh, way in the development area. Now, let's go back to our architecture and consider that uh, you, may, you can have uh, multiple uh, application servers. You can also have your application servers in uh, microservices in a Kubernetes. So basically your Docker image or Kubernetes image can be in a container registry and using a container uh, engine for Kubernetes, you can span as many applications as you want, quite many over here, as you can see. So the architecture would be uh, close to this with a load balancer um, and balancing uh, the connections, putting the connections on the application and all of them connecting to an autonomous database with the data guard enabled. So this actually leads to the next architecture. Why not? build something on the CI CD, continuous integration, continuous uh, delivery or deployment. For the um, end application, the architecture would be practically the same with the load balancer with the applications and with the autonomous database. But you also can use uh, some other VMs with Jenkins, for example, to get the code from uh, GitHub let's say you have your latest application on, on GitHub, uh, get the code from there, build a Docker image out of that code, uh, register it with the container registry and using uh, container engine Kubernetes uh, to deploy applications. And this is at the application part, but also at the database part, you can use something like Liquibase to have the schema versioning and uh, uh, have that, that versions or that differences in the schema in, in GitHub uh, and deploy them in the autonomous uh, database. So these are the, the features that you can use to build your CI CD pipeline with autonomous database. 
and then some particular terms uh, about it. So Jenkins, it is the, the open source software that allows you to uh, build projects and draw data from GitHub and build uh, Docker images. Registry is the place, it's an Oracle managed, registry is the place where you can uh, store and manage Docker images. Uh, container, uh, container engine for Kubernetes is the uh, scalable, highly available service that allows you to create um, applications, to create VMs, compute resources uh, from, from the registry. And Liquibase is the, the um, tool, is one of the tools that can support a, a database versioning on the schema. Now, these are the three uh, examples of autonomous transaction processing architectures. So we started with the basic example of uh, an Apache Tomcat connected to a database. Um, then uh, we increased it, we brought high availability with a load balancer and uh, several service servers, application servers, and, and uh, autonomous data warehouse, and then uh, brought microservices to the table and CICD pipeline to, to the table and how can you put it with autonomous. And the very big benefit of autonomous over here is that all these architectures can be uh, scripted with Terraform and deployed in a matter of minutes. Now, the next part, the, the final part would be some scenarios, some typical, some rather not so typical, but uh, quite used scenarios on how to load data into autonomous. So on, on, on our first uh, example, uh, architecture example, it was about loading the data into autonomous data warehouse, loading uh, spreadsheets or CSV files. And I talked about loading them into object storage Autonomous data warehouse can uh, connect and read from that object storage. And uh, because of that, you can create other external tables or create tables or, or load data inside. So this you can do manually from inside the autonomous database. To automate it, because you can automate it quite easily, uh, you can enable the events on object storage. So each time, a new file is uploaded in, in an object storage bucket, uh, an event is triggered that would call functions and one of uh, the serverless functions. And in that, those serverless functions, you can code that, okay, uh, read the data from this file and load it into autonomous database. The benefit of that is that uh, events and uh, functions are serverless and they can span quite much uh, on the power for, on the power. So basically reading large amounts of files becomes quite simple using functions and um, autonomous database and events. So this is one way of doing it, um, doing the automation, the loading of uh, the database. Another way to load the database, well, um, is considering the entire stack of the application and the, the equipment. So this means that the database is fully used also in the on-premise environments or on, on the, the customer's environment with an application, with the database, with the storage in the background and migrate or move to, to cloud. How can you move the, the database to autonomous? Quite simple. Well, use a tool called move to ADB. Is, is a particular software that uh, automates data pump, data pump import into autonomous data warehouse. And what it does, frankly, it um, does a database export on, uh, uh, on the site, uh, loads the export in object storage on the HTTPS protocol, and also automates the data pump import. So uh, the, the connection, all, all this process of uh, exporting, loading the data and importing um, is automated, therefore made, made a bit faster and less prone to errors uh, into the autonomous database. 
So quite simple and, and powerful. And the third example that we have today is how to migrate uh, from other databases or other types of databases to autonomous database. So the, this is uh, going to be a bit more complex because uh, this is an example that I presented to a customer a couple of months ago and I liked it so much uh, because it brought so many things to, to the table. So having a SQL server uh, in the on-premises means that you can use a different uh, software that allows you to have heterogeneous connections like Golden Gate and ODI. And uh, to have less downtime, I decided with Golden Gate. And in the cloud, in, in uh, marketplace, you'd find Golden Gate for SQL Server, the same one as, as you've probably used with in the on-premises, and connect with Golden Gate uh, with an extra process and see the differences and get the, the latest uh, data. And using micro Golden Gate microservices in the cloud, you can get the, the, the data and put it, replicate it uh, with a replica process to autonomous database. Now this is done for continuous um, uh, migration, continuous loading, continuous replication. But what about the initial data? The initial data can be loaded or you can do an initial load using ODI. And this is quite powerful because also you can do the uh, data format transformation between the two of them. So I would say uh, use ODI to do the initial load into autonomous and use Golden Gate, um, both of them to do the continuous data uh, replication between SQL Server and autonomous. Andre, just a, yes. a small reminder. So we are at uh, 4.46 now. So five minutes to finish the presentation and then another five minutes for the question. We already have one question. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, actually, the, these are the architectures and the typical scenarios that I wanted to show you today. So the, the last part would be the questions. Okay, so we have one question. If you are able to open the question and answer a tab in Zoom, you can see it. Okay, give me- I will read it. Uh, Is there a requirement that autonomous database data guard to be built within the same region or it can be set up across region? Yes. At this point, uh, the autonomous, the standby of the autonomous database, it is in the same region. Uh, the, uh, the PMs and product development are working to make it available across region. Okay. okay. Uh, other, let's, yeah. let's wait yes. another 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Uh, so, <clears throat> regarding uh, the autonomous database, is this part of the OCI? Uh, yes. Okay. Of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure uh, products? Uh, um, how can I say? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's part of the OCI. Yes. Uh, in, in Oracle uh, Cloud Infrastructure, it is the, the uh, generation to cloud from Oracle. So over here, um, Oracle started developing a lot of new products. And okay. one of those products would be the improved and the next generation of the Oracle database on the autonomous side. So it is part of that. 